Hi, welcome to the InterAxis channel, InterAxis.io. Today we're going to keep talking about more stable coins. In this case, we're going to talk about Celo. First, I want to remind you that we keep uh, creating content like this. This week, of course, we're talking about stable coins. Uh, we've talked about lending. We've talked about real world assets on chain. All these different topics uh, dealing with decentralized finance, cryptocurrency, uh, blockchain. If you want to keep getting this content, subscribe to our channel here and you'll keep, uh, you'll be updated as soon as we bring out new videos. We really like talking about some of these themes and we hope you enjoy it too. So remember to subscribe, remember to follow us on Twitter at Interaxis8 so you can get the latest updates. Now we're going to keep moving talking about stable coins. In this case we're going to talk about Celo. So Celo is actually an organization that created this, uh, the, the Celo protocol. And the idea behind Celo is they really want to uh, be able to do, you know, what we call in DeFi, kind of bank the unbanked, right? There are all these people in the world. One in three adults in the world do not have a bank account. They do not have a way to bank themselves. Therefore, Celo is trying to build uh, an entire network, a protocol, to be able to help many of those people uh, with finances, to be able to have access to many of the financial, to much of the financial infrastructure that a lot of us really kind of take for granted. So Celo has built this network. They have some unbelievable investors and backers like Andreessen Horowitz, uh, Jack Dorsey, Reed Hoffman, a, a lot of these names that are big in the, in the tech world, Dragonfly Partners, are, are behind Celo because they're trying to build this uh, worldwide network that allows people to access the financial system. And they're doing it utilizing, uh, a lot of people don't have banks, but a lot of people have cell phones. So they're utilizing mobile phones and applications on, on mobile phones and they're tying uh, your wallet, so your crypto wallet, to a phone number. So in theory, I can transact with other people that I have on my contact list just by their phone number. I can send money essentially to their phone number. They might get a message that says you have to go create a wallet it, and it'll be tied to your phone number and that way you kind of have a digital identity, start building a digital reputation for yourself, be able to be banked now because there are others in the network. So what Celo has done is they have this, uh, so uh, again they have the Celo uh, network protocol and they're allowing developers to come in here and use the protocol to build some of these financial applications, right? So you have lending, maybe uh, in investing, maybe some sort of uh, digital assets eventually. Um, I, I'm, I'm betting there'll be insurance, especially because I, I, I think a lot of the people using this are probably in the, the farming uh, type industries and agriculture. So there'll be some insurance there based on this Celo protocol. And since they've built it to be so lightweight and on phones and, and based on the mobile networks that I can then send money back and forth, well now we can create this worldwide network. Uh, the, this blockchain based network of people that are connected on Celo and then they can send money, they can use money, they can lend, they can borrow, they can invest, they can insure, all those things that we take for granted in the, in the traditional financial world they can do it now and they can be using the Celo backbone. But of course uh, as we've talked about for the, for the last couple of weeks one of the most important things you have to have is you have to have some level of stability. Right, you have some stable coin, stable value that you transact in. So I know that when I send money to someone or when I borrow money, that, that that dollar, that coin that I use is worth about the same today as it was when I borrowed it a month ago or two months ago or a year ago or, or whatever it might be. I can't have the value of my loan or the value of my business transactions going up and down in volatility like we've seen happen with cryptocurrency in the past. Okay, so what Celo had to do was build the Celo dollar, so the C-U-S-D. Okay, so the, the Celo dollar. So their first stable coin is going to be pegged, or is pegged to the one-to-one -to, -one to the U.S. dollar. Um, now, what, what they have overall in the uh, Celo network, and again, this talk is meant to be about the, the Celo dollar, the, the stable coin, but we have to talk a bit about the whole, the whole network. So what they have is Celo is not a fully public blockchain. Not everyone can get a node and, and get on there and validate. So they have validators, they have uh, 100 validators, and those validators get paid. Um, they, they can, they, they've been uh, issued C gold, so C-G-L-D. 
Okay, so CGLD is the is the cryptocurrency that's actually going to fluctuate in value. Okay, and the point is these validators are wanting to validate this network. They have to have some sort of incentive, right? And the incentive is is the the value of the CGLD. So they sold the the uh, network. They sold a bunch of CGLD. Uh, in the marketplace, and that's how they got a bunch of money in their reserve. So the CUSD uh, is backed by C, uh, CGLD, can't write for some reason today, and then it's also backed by uh, Bitcoin, ETH, and DAI in, in the reserve, in, the pro, in, in what's called the Cello Reserve. And the CUSD is minted enough so that it maintains its value. So however these are fluctuating, the, the idea is for this to maintain its dollar value. We're going to keep enough in reserve for this to maintain the dollar value. Now, the question is, okay, what, what happens if the value of CUSD goes up? Well, the value of CUSD goes up from, say, a dollar to, we'll call it a dollar five. Okay, let's think about what has happened in the market for, for that to transpire. That means there is more demand for CUSD than there is supply. More people are wanting to use it, to, to transact in it. There, there needs to be more. There aren't enough, so we have to pay more than a dollar for it. So it's a dollar five. Well, that's really good. For the, for the validators, right? Because that means there's so much demand on the network. People have built enough applications, there's enough use for it, there's more demand than there is supply. That should be good for these validators, right? So what happens? The Celo protocol says, if we see that the value of CUSD is worth more than a dollar, that means we have to add supply. We have to mint more CUSD. We need more supply because there's too much demand. So we mint. Uh, CUSD, we put it out there in the market, and we uh, we use CGLD to we, we buy CGLD back. So that so it puts out CUSD and exchanges it for CGLD, Cello Gold. Okay, what that means is it create it it, it basically bumps up the price or the value of Cello Gold because the protocol is out there buying it, right? And they're buying it with the, the CUSD stablecoin. So that's why it's good because now the value of this has gone up because this protocol, the, the, the arithmetic, the math, right? The, the, the algorithm has said, we're going to create this kind of out of thin air. We're going to put it out there in the market. And the way we put it out there is we buy this back and stick it back in the reserve. Okay, so again, the demand for CUSD is up there. The demand for the network is up. And therefore, the protocol is going to print more, make more dollars, make more stable coin, and buy back the cello gold and put it in the, in the reserve, making the value of cello gold go up, right? There's less of it out there in the world. There's more demand by the protocol. Therefore, it's good for the validators. It's good for the network. The goal is get developers to build applications and get people to put this wallet, put the, the, the app on their phone and start transacting around the world in cello gold. That's the whole point. So, what happened that so uh, what happens then if the value goes down to call it 98 cents okay now that's that's bad for the network right there's there's more supply than there is demand so the opposite is going to happen the protocol is going to say look we're going to sell the cello gold and we're going to buy CUSD. We're going to put that back in the in the reserve and we're going to burn it when it comes in. Less supply is going to drive the price back up to a dollar and we're going to do that till the, the market demand is there. Now we're going to go back just a little bit and say well what's the value of my having the CGLD? What can I do? Well let's say that that, that demand goes up and the price goes up to a dollar five again and I'm holding CGLD. Well, when I hold the Cello the Cello Gold, I can always sell a dollar's worth of Cello Gold into the reserve and mint one CUSD, one dollar's worth of CUSD. So I do that. I get one dollar. I, I put in my my one dollar's worth of Cello Gold. I get one dollar's worth or one uh, CUSD. 
I can go sell it on the open market for $1.05. Now what I've done is I've created, I, I've used the incentive mechanism to create arbitrage, right? So the arbitrage opportunity is I can sell a dollar's worth of CGLD, get one CUSD and sell that for $1.05 and I profit five cents. Well, that doesn't sound like a lot unless I do it you know, 5,000 times and now I've profited enough and maybe I've done enough to move the market back closer to maybe a dollar two and the protocol can take the rest. So there's the arbitrage opportunity, which means the value of my CGLD has, has won me something. The fact that I hold it now has gotten me this arbitrage ability that I wouldn't have had otherwise. So that is a little bit about CUSD. It's really uh, the, the important thing is they've built their own network. This is not on Ethereum or, or Bitcoin or one of the other uh, public blockchains. This is where they, have, they are deciding who the validators are. Um, the validators are getting paid. The, so the validators also have to stake. So if they act maliciously, they can, the validators can have their solo gold burned. Okay, but the key is they're using a combination of protocol and incentive mechanisms to try to hold the value of CUSD at a dollar. Now, the CGLD is also a governance token. So eventually the holders can go, look, we want to mint other stable coins. We want to have a, a C euro and a C yen or, or some of these others, or maybe we just create a, a basket of cryptocurrencies or a, or a basket of other assets and we can hold those in reserve and figure out how to, to keep that stable so it doesn't have to be pegged to a dollar it can be pegged to a basket of assets and the and the C gold token holders be, by way of governance are able to uh, vote on that and create that but remember they are incented the validators are incented they they actually get paid uh, CUSD for doing the uh, validating they get paid to validate all these transactions that are going on hopefully all over the world but the value here is built in the cello organization getting developers to build applications that get users around the world to actually put this on their phone and use it. So again, the, the value of this is only going to be there if, if there's demand, if people are actually using it. But they had to create a stable coin so that users could transact and feel pretty confident that the transactions that they make are worth about a dollar. They know what they're worth. Now again, just like all the other protocols we've talked about, they've chosen a dollar because the, the, the US dollar is kind of the world reserve currency. If at some point they want to change though, the Seagold holders can decide they want to change what the stable coin is or they want to have multiple stable coins or something like that. But right now, that's a little bit about Celo, a little bit about CUSD, how it's affected by the network. It's its own little network built for a purpose. And the purpose is to get all those people that maybe don't have bank accounts but have mobile phones to be able to transact with each other around the world, have this peer-to-peer -peer network which is somewhat decentralized, it, it's, it's got these validators, it's not a fully decentralized network like Ethereum, but it's somewhat decentralized in that they have these validators. Uh, ideally, the organization doesn't completely control everything. These are governance tokens, so those that have the, the governance tokens can, can effectively govern the protocol, get it out there, and, and the goal is to get a lot of demand by virtue of the developers that develop these uh, applications, again, like lending and investing and insurance and staking and, and everything else that we can do in, in the traditional finance world and put it out there on the Celo network. So that's a little bit about Celo. Check them out, Celo.org. Um, and that's a little bit about their stable coin that, that they've kind of uh, released on the world and hope to have a lot more uh, traction and a lot more use uh, using mobile phones. Again, so please subscribe to the channel here below so you can get the most up-to-date content. We hope you like this video. Follow us on Twitter at Interaxis8. Email is info at interaxis.io. We hope to see you in the next video.